Well, let's stay with our main story now. The UN Security Council's condemnation of Syria's use of force against civilians. Aaron David Miller is a former advisor to the US State Department, where he participated in efforts to broker agreements between Israel, Jordan, Syria and the Palestinians. He's currently a scholar at the Woodrow Wilson Center, and he joins us on the line now from Washington. Thanks very much for talking to BBC Newsday. Do you think the UN's condemnation is enough, or should it be going stronger? Should it be threatening President Assad with indictment for crimes against humanity? You can do all that, but the reality is unless you can actually implement it, it's not going to make much of a difference. The administration's policy, I think, is, uh, is clearly sensitive to the fact that uh, they haven't had much success in Libya. After all, the president several months ago said Gaddafi must go, and guess what? Gaddafi's still there. We sent NATO, we've established a no-fly zone, we've conducted military operations NATO has against Libyan military assets, and yet, despite all of that, Gaddafi still remains. So I think the administration uh, seems somewhat constrained in view of that experience and is very reluctant, I think, to use tough rhetoric when, frankly, uh, it can't do much about it. And, and that's really the case for the international community as well. You can toughen sanctions, you can toughen rhetoric, you could try to co coordinate um, with the Russians and with the Turks, but at the end of the day, you got a regime uh, brutal and oppressive fighting for its life. Uh, it's not going to give in and it's not going to stand down. So, Aaron, what are the options for the international community then? I think the options are, ver are, ver are very poor. You can begin to, you, look, you could do an enormous amount of damage to the Syrian economy. You could sanction Syrian commercial bank. That would be a huge step. You could try to tighten and get other states to uh, essentially embargo or boycott Syrian oil and gas. But I think the concern is not, not Assad. I think the administration, and I'll speak as an American here, has written him off. The question is how best to manage a transition. And I think the administration is very concerned that if they go nuclear on this, so to speak, that they're going to end up creating a situation where the vast majority of the Syrian public who are not participating in this is going to end up suffering. You could end up stoking sectarian tensions. And you could end up seeing what the administration fears most, I think, which is essentially a collapse of any central authority and a fragmentation of the country. Look, as far as I'm concerned, um, I, don't, I don't fear the future here. I think Assad has to go. And any outcome, frankly, would be better than the one we see right now. Are you suggesting, then, that there is a possibility that President Assad can survive all of this and continue to lead Syria? I think that the arc on the Assad family, writ large, is heading south. I don't think there's any question about that. But we've seen, haven't we, in so many cases where the Arab Spring has now turned to winter, in Yemen, where resilient uh, Abdullah Saleh still controls matters from abroad, in Bahrain, uh, where under Saudi uh, influence, uh, the Bahraini family has cracked down on, on, on Shia. And in Libya, where Gaddafi still manages to hang on, despite the uh, pressures from the entire international community, an indictment or, or accusation of war crimes by the ICC, all of this gives rise to one basic fact. This is a very long movie. I think next year at this time, if we talk, the Assads probably will not be here, at least Bashar Assad won't. But it's going to take time, and um, things are not moving in the right direction. Okay, Aaron David Miller, former advisor to the U.S. State Department. Fascinating to hear your insight there. Thank you very much.